How does a chewy sour candy shaped like a worm end up pulling in billions worldwide? Well, you see, sour gummies aren't just a snack. They're part of a global gummy industry worth over $8 billion and climbing fast. In the U.S. alone, the gummy market is growing at lightning speed, with millions of bags flying off the shelves every year. But behind all that color and flavor are surprisingly complex processes that we'll be covering here at The Process World. Sour gummy worms didn't just crawl their way into candy bags overnight. They were actually born from a clever twist on an already famous treat. Back in the 1920s, a German company named Haribo introduced gummy bears, and they quickly became a global hit. Fast forward to the 1980s and another German brand, Trauli, decided to shake things up. They switched the gummy concept into long, wiggly shapes that looked like worms. The idea was playful, strange, and perfect for catching attention especially among kids. At first, these gummy worms were fruity and sweet, often in two-tone colors like raspberry and apple. Then came the game changer, sour versions. By adding a sharp coating of citric acid mixed with sugar, gummy worms got their signature tangy kick. That flavor twist pushed them even further into the spotlight. In the US, sour gummy worms quickly became a top seller. By 2018, they were ranked as the second most popular gummy candy in the country, just behind the original bears. But how are they made? Before sour gummies even take shape, it all starts with a thick, sticky mix of carefully chosen ingredients. The first key player is gelatin, which gives the worms their chewy bounce. Some factories also use pectin or starch instead, especially for vegetarian or vegan-friendly versions. Then comes the sugar and corn syrup. These two lock in the sweetness while also keeping the gummy from turning into a rock. Corn syrup also stops crystals from forming, which could mess the mixture. To make that sour kick really pop, citric acid, malic acid, or lactic acid is also added to the mix. These are food-safe acids that create the mouth-puckering effect. Every batch also includes natural or artificial flavors, like cherry, raspberry, and grape. This is what gives the worms their fruity identity. And to make the worms stand out on shelves, food grade color dyes are used, everything from neon green to deep purple. Lastly, a few ingredients come into play during the finishing process. Mineral oil, beeswax, or carnauba wax help give the gummies that glossy shine and keep them from sticking to each other. So even though they look like simple candies, sour gummy worms are built on a mix that's all about balance. Chewy, sweet, sour, and colorful, all packed into one bite. Then comes the transition from powder to paste. This is where things really start heating up, literally. To make the gummy base, everything begins in massive industrial mixing tanks. Inside, sugar, corn syrup, gelatin, citric acid, water, and flavoring agents are poured in with precision. Each ingredient has a specific role, and the ratios are tightly controlled. Even a small imbalance could throw off the texture or taste of the final product. Once everything is loaded, the mixture is heated and stirred until it turns into a thick, gooey syrup. This stage is called compounding, and it can take a few hours depending on the batch size. Heating melts the gelatin and dissolves the water, while constant mixing ensures everything blends smoothly without lumps or clumps. Temperature and timing are critical here. The syrup has to hit the right consistency. Not too runny, not too thick. At this stage, some factories even introduce the flavoring and coloring directly into the mix to create different gummy varieties in the same run. After it's cooked and ready, the syrupy base is passed through a filtration system to remove any undissolved particles. Then it's sent off for molding, the next big step in the worm-making journey.
Once the gummy base is ready, it's time to turn that sticky syrup into actual worm shapes. And that's where the mogul machine steps in. This machine is a beast in candy production. It handles molding with speed and accuracy that would be impossible to match by hand. It starts with starch-filled trays, which get pressed with customized design boards to create worm-shaped indentations. After the trays are prepped, the hot gummy syrup is pumped through depositors. These are automated nozzles that squirt just the right amount of mix into each indentation. Some factories use high-speed depositors that can mix in different flavors, colors, or acids right at this stage, making the process even faster and more efficient. The starch in the tray plays a big role, too. It keeps the gummy mixture from sticking and helps absorb some of the moisture, which speeds up the setting process. Now that the trays are filled with freshly deposited gummy syrup, they head straight into the cooling room. This isn't just any regular room. It's a temperature-controlled space where everything is timed and monitored carefully. The goal here is to let the worms fully set and hold their shape without rushing the process. The trays stay in this room for up to 24 hours, depending on the factory setup. During that time, the gummy mix slowly solidifies as it cools. The starch trays help by drying out some of the moisture, which speeds things up a little. This stage is key for locking in the final texture, that firm but chewy bite gummy worms are known for. The temperature and humidity inside the room are constantly regulated. Then, once the cooling is complete and the worms are solid, the trays are flipped over. A vibrating screen and soft brushes gently knock out the worms, separating them from the starch. After that, the starch is cleaned and reused, and the gummy worms move to their next step, the part that makes them sour. The worms are sent through a coating station where the real flavor twist happens. It starts with a quick pass through a steam chamber. This step makes their surface just sticky enough to hold the sour mix. Next, the worms tumble inside large rotating drums. Here's where they meet the sour sugar blend, a mixture of granulated sugar and citric acid. As the drum spins, every worm gets an even coat of that sweet and tangy dust. The timing, speed, and amount of coating all matter. If there's too much acid, it will overwhelm the taste. Too little and it falls flat. That's why trained workers monitor this step closely, even though the machines handle the heavy lifting. After coating, the worms are left to dry slightly so the sugar layer sticks properly. This is what locks in that sour flavor and gives each worm that satisfying punch when you eat it. Once dried, they're ready to be sorted, packed, and sealed for candy fans everywhere. But before that, did you know that inside gummy factories, cleanliness isn't just a good habit, it's a strict requirement? You see, from the moment ingredients are handled to the final packaging stage, hygiene rules are taken seriously. Workers are required to wash their hands thoroughly before starting any task, after breaks, or after using the restroom. Gloves, hairnets, and clean uniforms are standard. Even though most of the process is handled by machines, factories don't leave anything to chance. One of the cleanest production methods used is called starchless depositing. Unlike traditional methods where candy sits in starch trays, this process uses silicone or metal molds that don't require dusting with starch. It means less mess, faster drying, and a cleaner environment overall. Fewer materials floating around also reduce the risk of contamination. Factory floors are designed with sanitation in mind. Machines are regularly cleaned and inspected, and air systems help control moisture and particles in the environment. Every batch goes through quality control checks, making sure there's no defects and that the hygiene standards have been met. Before any gummy worms hit the shelves, it's already gone through layers of safety measures to make sure that it's safe to eat. Once everything is set, it's time to get the gummy worms ready for shelves. And this part is all about precision. Once the sour coating is set, the worms are sent down the conveyor belts to automated packaging stations, where machines take over the sorting and portioning. These systems are designed to weigh the exact amount for each bag so every pack that you grab at the store has just the right number of worms inside. After sorting, the worms drop into preformed bags or plastic containers, which are quickly sealed to keep out air and moisture. This step is important for keeping the gummies fresh, chewy, and shelf-stable. Then comes the labeling and branding. Logos, flavor descriptions, and nutritional information are stamped onto each package so they're retail ready. And that's it, so now to you. Which part of the factory process surprised you the most? And would you ever want to try making your own at home? Share your thoughts in the comments section below.